going on everybody? Good morning, it's R3 Speed and Fabrication. Down in the shop, where else would we be, baby? Uh, it is awesome weather right now, finally cooled off a little bit, and trying to take advantage of some of this, you're gonna have to excuse me as I swat away the bugs, okay? Um, yeah, down in the shop, man, and today we're talking about something that I get asked questions on over and over again, right? The Micron, 5S. Uh, this is a 5S 2T. This is probably over and above what most people need, but we're not really talking about the gauge today. What we're talking about is getting the information off of the gauge, right, and onto your computer. So <clears throat> the biggest problem, again, I see generally with people in the AIM system, reason I think a lot of people get the Alfano, is that you can look at it on your phone. There's just an app to download, okay? Whereas with the AIM system, you have to have a laptop, you have to download the software onto the laptop. You've got to get the gauge and the laptop to communicate via Bluetooth. There's a lot going on there, right? It can be really overwhelming when you're getting going, um, but it's a really user-friendly system. It's pretty intuitive. And as I say all the time, if I can figure this out and do it, I'm telling you anybody can figure this out and do it. So. Um, we're going to go through kind of step by step here on what the procedure looks like. I, I'm hopeful that this is going to be helpful to some people out there because again, people ask me all the time, kind of how can I get started? I'm sure there's some videos here uh, on it. And certainly if you go to the AIM site, right, they kind of step you through some of this, but that can be overwhelming as well. So we're going to go uh, hopefully pretty slow here. Uh, we're going to go through step by step some of the things that were blocks for me or that I see as, as major issues for people and then we're going to try to open up some data and look at it real quickly just at a high level overview so uh come along with us here this morning that's r3 speed and fabrication we're going to get your aim dash set up so you can download data from the racetrack let's go all right people here we go so this is what we're going to start with gonna get your laptop fired up you're going to get a connection to the internet however it is that you do that right and you're going to go to the aim website you can Google it, right? But right there it is, aim-sportline.com, all right? You go to the site there, and the first thing you see, you've got a bunch of tabs across the top. We want download, okay? SWFW download. Now, I've already opened this up in a second tab up here just so we don't have to wait for my computer to load. And once you get to this one, you're going to go to Race Studio 3. Race Studio 3 is the newest and latest platform from AIM, and as you can see here, they are constantly updating this. They constantly make revisions, changes, updates, improvements, fixes. Um, you can go over here if you look at the release history, right, and you can see what the changes are from session over session. This is the latest version that even I don't have myself, and I updated this as recently, I think, as a week and a half ago. So um, you can go through again down here. There's there's a bunch of information on this page. I'm not going to get into it. You know, we're going to be real simple today as far as just getting Race Studio 3 downloaded onto your laptop and getting a data connection. So you're going to click on the download button here. I'm not going to download it because I already have this on this machine, but this will step you through it, right? You'll click on download. You'll follow the prompts. Uh, through Ray Studio 3 will guide you through as an installation on any other uh, program that you're downloading onto your laptop, your computer, right? Follow all the prompts and eventually you're going to get to a point where you've got a little icon just like this, okay? Just like me up on your desktop, that's the Ray Studio 3 icon. So now what we're going to do is we're going to open that up. This is the program that you're going to do all of your work in from the Micron, okay? Now we're gonna connect this to this so we can actually start to look at our data. So the first thing you gotta make sure is that you've got a wireless connection here. You need a Wi-Fi connection, a Bluetooth connection on your, on your machine. And we are going to power this gauge on, okay? I don't have it on the cart for purposes of getting us going. I can set this up for you guys too if you're interested in getting your logo or whatever information you might want onto these. It was a pretty simple thing. Okay, so we're going to exit out of here. So I need to know, right, the information from this 
to connect it to here because if I go up here to this little dealy bob or whatever this is, internet connection, right, you can see there's some open networks here. Now this is the network for this gauge, right? Um, I'm already connected, I've connected before, but if you don't have this connected, you're gonna have to go through and manually select the connection. So how you do that is you're gonna go into your gauge, you're gonna go to menu, and you're going to go to settings, the little wrench, okay? And then you're going to go over to system information, and then right over here is your serial number, okay? When you pull this up the first time, how this is going to look is just like this, right? 14503, 14503, okay? Those are gonna have to match up. Once you see your gauge pulled up on here, right? Now you can look to make the connection. Now another important point here is that Wi-Fi has to be turned on on this gauge. So this is another thing here. We're gonna exit out. We're gonna go over to Wi-Fi. Enter. Wi-Fi mode. On. Okay. So you can also look at your uh, SSID, it's on this page as well. You can see uh, how frequently, how good I am at this. I usually go to the other page to get this info, right? But um, you've gotta have that on. So it's really simple, you just hit change. If it's off to on, then you exit back out of here. You really can't mess anything up with this. I encourage people, and as a side note, to go into this gauge, right? And play around with the buttons, get used to using the tabs to navigate. Right, you basically got next, previous, change, and exit. Uh, it's a fairly simple, fairly simple gauge. I'm telling you, this is it's, they are so much easier to use uh, than they once were in the past. Right, so we've got our Wi-Fi on, and we've got a matching connection from our gauges. Okay, so I'm going to exit out of here. Now the gauge has to remain on when we're going to do a download. So if your gauge is powered off, you can't just do all this and turn the gauge off, right? So we're gonna come up here and we're gonna click on connect. And it's actually gonna ask me for a password. And I've gotta stop and think about that for a second here. Um, a note on the password protection, right, is that if you don't have your data password protected, someone else can come in and look at that information, right, uh, they, if they want to try to find your network. In this case, it's very easy to identify who I am because I've got my name and my number on there. So if it's a competitor, pretty easy to figure that out, right? Um, there's other ways that you could do that. but. We're not talking about password protection today. That could be a whole other video. I would encourage you to do it if you're just getting started. Honestly, no one's probably looking at your data anyway. So, now we're connected. You see if I go up here, right, I've got this little green arrow. This little green arrow was not working before we had established our Wi-Fi connection. So, we're gonna come back over here. I'm gonna click on this. It's now connecting to here. And you can see it's actually got live measures pulled up. now. There are no measures right now to pull up because we have nothing connected to the gauge, again. But you can watch this live time if you have it out on track and you have a good enough connection and you're close enough. So we're going back to download though. We're going back to download and what we're looking at here. So again, we're connected to our gauge. We've got a good connection up there. And then here's a bunch of data sessions, a bunch of sessions that we've put in. Uh-oh. Okay, we got a bunch of sessions, couldn't tell you what happened there, um, that we have not yet downloaded off the gauge. I really don't even know where these are from, to be completely honest with you, but we're gonna start with one session at a time. So you can see there's a bunch, right, of arrows here, and then all these different sessions. You can download them all at once if you like. Um, it's really a good habit to get into to download your data after every session, okay? I'm gonna clear those off. I want only one session here because I wanna keep this really simple. So you're gonna click on 
the selection that you want, and then you're going to come right up here to download. I'm going to click on that, okay, and you're going to make whatever notes in here that you want to make, who the driver was, your number, you can enter in the racetrack, you can enter in the qualifying session. In this case, this was probably uh, a pre-final track. You can enter track name. Uh, all this stuff, right? You can get into a lot of this. We're trying to keep it basic. I would encourage you to put this information in when you get started. And then another handy thing to do here is in the comment box, again, best practice, right? You go out, you run a session on track, you come in, you download it. And then when you are downloading it, I really like to enter in any notes or relevant information about that session in the comment box. And that way I can look back on changes that we've made for the session, uh, notes for the session, did the track cool off, did the track heat up, uh, did it rain, you know, did the clouds come out, um, did we try a different air pressure setting, did we change a gear, and then, you know, I put in my notes for what worked and maybe what didn't work to correspond that change. So we're going to enter our notes in. We're going to enter all this information in. We're going to download. We're going to hit OK. And then you can see it starts downloading the data via a wireless connection. Um, it's going to ask. It's been asking me if you want the latest version of Race Studio 2. No, I don't. No, you don't. Do you want to download it? No, I don't. No, you don't. So, OK. We just downloaded a session of data. Step number one. So now that you have that done, you can go back, and again, it's good practice, go ahead, power your gauge off, right? We're gonna turn it off. You don't wanna leave it on, waste your battery. We've made our download, we've made our connection. And then now, we're gonna go back up here, right? And we're gonna to go to three. You see the little, it says three analysis, okay? That's Race Studio 3, and then now you'll notice no longer we have a device connected because we've powered our gauge off. So, we're going to go to three. We're going to click on three. And all over here are all for me of the different sessions that I have on this machine. I don't really have that many because we invested in a new laptop. And um, I've got a bunch of stuff on my old one on the cloud that I haven't transferred over. But right up there you can see new Garnett Sprint Track. We're going to click on that. And again, in my case, we've got a lot of data sessions on here from when we were out at the racetrack. But right over here, you can see Gavin. And then over here, it's flashing new. Boy, that's terrible, terrible photo. Hang on. Maybe that's going to make it a little better. We got a bad glare here. Okay. We're gonna to go to our new data session, right? This is the one here. We're going to double click on that. And just like that, you've got your data, you've got it downloaded into Race Studio 3, and you're ready now to do some analysis, okay? This is a whole other deal, right? Um, it's not gonna look like this for you the first time you download your data. And this is a whole thing here, man, um, of really building this out the way that you want it. So you can notice that again, I've got my track map down here. I've got some data points that we look at right away pretty much every time. Um, corresponding over here, you know, I've got speed and some GPS data. Uh, you can add in anything, right? You can look at a bunch of different stuff, but I've got my time distance layout. I've got a split report. Um, I've got a channels report, I've got some braking information, and then again I've got another track map uh, broken down depending on what sector I'm looking at. So getting to this point is the step number one, and this is the first place that you want to start. Get comfortable, right? Get comfortable getting into here. Get comfortable toggling around. Get Race Studio 3 downloaded, installed on your laptop. I encourage you to test this out at home right before you go to the track. You can still make a connection even if you don't have data to download before you go out to the racetrack. I would say that's probably my highest priority tip. Don't go out to the racetrack without testing this because likely you're going to get out there and you're going to get frustrated, you're going to forget about it, and you're going to get back on whatever it is that you were doing that day. So take a few minutes when you're at home, at the shop, in the garage, wherever it is that you're working on this. 
to, to get it all set up, you know, get Ray Studio 3 downloaded on there, go to the AIM site. There's a bunch of other tutorials. Uh, you're more than welcome, you know, you can ask questions for me here. Coming back on this video, you can leave a note, a comment, a message, whatever. Um, happy to try to help people and get you going on your world down this because this is an expensive tool, right? Um, this is an investment for you guys in your racing. I, I understand the cost on these, man, I do. Um, you know, a brand new 5S, I think is around $500, $600 right now. And that's not really anything extra, okay? That's just the gauge. And people are just using this for lap times, man. And this is, if you invest the time to learn how to use this, that's the key here, okay? You've got to invest the time, okay? Or you gotta pay somebody, right? Plenty of people that will do it. I'm happy to do it. Lots of other people out there doing it. Okay, you don't wanna spend the money? I understand that. So you've got to invest the time and watching the videos here. Um, I've taken, uh, we're already kind of away from the AIM site here, but you can go on YouTube, you can look up AIM, Race Studio 3, Analysis, and there's a million videos that are there, some of which I've done, right? And a basic one here, again, because when you open yours up for the first time, it's not gonna look like this. You're gonna notice all these tabs at the top. And basically, let's just close all of these. I'm gonna say no. Um, we're going to just go show the time distance layout. I'm gonna click on that tab, and then now that box opens up. Okay, and then I could click on any of these others. All of these do different things, right? Uh, channels report. The channels report is one that I just had up. And again, you're gonna open the channels report for the first time and it's not going to look like this because I've set this up to open up the fields that I wanna see, which is min and max RPM, distance, speed, min and max, lateral G-forces, and longitudinal G-forces. So you can configure this to whatever information you might want to use. Um, it's, it's unlimited where you can take this right now, okay, from what it's gonna look like when you first open it up. It just becomes a matter of time. You know, the best, the best reports for me that I really like, uh, I've talked about it before, really finding some easy hidden time if you're really working on driver development. My favorite is the split report. I'm gonna close that up. We're gonna open up um, another session here real quick. And split report, you will notice, comes right to the top. Split report takes all of your best laps, your best information from the session. In this case, the driver ran a 27.78, and in theory, it could have ran a 27.52. So with only five laps of racing, I would say the driver did an excellent job in that situation. But generally, with split report, you want your theoretical as close to the real number as you could possibly get. So there is your... Um, 20 minute overview on how to set up and download data from your Micron 5. Really hope this was helpful uh, for a few people. I'd love to have some comments on it. I can't stress enough how valuable this tool is, right? It's a $600 tool. Use it for more than just lap times and uh, it can tell you about what's going on with your cart. It can tell you about what's going on with your driving. Uh, it's a great learning tool, and it's been a huge thing for us in our program. Really just want to share that with other people. It's not an easy button, however, right? It's not going to do it for you. Uh, you've either got to commit some resources, whether that's time or money, right? And learning how to build it out and to really get the most out of it. It's definitely a commitment. So with all that said, man, um, go do it. If you've got this gauge and you don't have uh, this set up on a laptop and you've got a laptop, take the time, go do it, get out to the track, do some testing, get better today. It's R3 Speed and Fabrication. Can't wait to see you people at the track. Peace.